Hey Club Pilates family, my name is Dr. Femi Batiku and I am a doctor of physical therapy as well as a Club Pilates instructor at Hoboken and West New York. So over the past few years, I've seen a lot of people doing all different types of activities, including Pilates, and one of the major things that limits them from progressing or staying consistent with their practice is injury. So one of the things I like to preach is during your downtime and during your off seasons, you want to practice some injury prevention through recovery. So one of the things I'm going to go over today is just different things that I do for myself that you can also possibly do as well for yourself is through foam rolling, some trigger point releases for different exercises. All right. So to start off, one of my favorite exercises hip circles, I start to see some of my limitations in this exercise. So this is genuinely an exercise that helps to uh, focus on your core to stabilize a little bit more. But instead, what I end up finding is I'm getting some restriction. As I'm trying to bring my leg up, I'm getting some restrictions in my quads, a little bit in my hamstring, and then as I go out a little bit in my adductor muscle group. Well, guess what? I've got some really, really fancy tools here to help me to improve that a little bit more. So the first one is this Hypervolt here from Hyperice. I want to use this just to start to work on different aspects of my hip muscles, my thigh muscles, just to improve my movement a little bit more. So first things first is I'm going to pin down this adductor muscle group a little bit, turn this Hyperice on, and there's different uh, bits at the end that comes with the hyperbole that helps you to just uh, target muscles a little bit differently. So first I'm going to just go to town on this adductor muscle group right there. Good. And as I keep my legs straight out, this is stretching out my adductor muscle group. And as I get to right here, I feel a nice tender spot. This, this could occur because of just doing those hip circles all the time, doing my feet and straps constantly, which uh, focuses a little bit more on the adductor muscle groups and everything. This will cause some tightness in these different muscle groups. I'm also an avid runner, so I take my Pilates practice out there on the streets and I run, 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 which feels amazing, but sometimes I start to get a little soreness. So, so that I can prevent further injury, I start to target these muscle groups a little bit more. Good. And I do this for about a minute to two minutes, just over different spots. And as I'm going through different portions of the muscle group, I'll stop at a certain point and I'll target it a little bit more. Cool. And then from there, I got my adductor muscle group. Now, next up, I want to get my quads a little bit more. But instead of, instead of just having my quads and just going to town on it, I want to kind of pin it down a little bit. So one of the muscles that helps me to bring my leg up in that hip circle uh, movement is are my quads and my hip flexors. So I stretch out and then I start to go to town right here on my quads, starting proximally all the way up top, working my way distally down to the bottom. And in this position, I'm stretched out. I feel a nice gentle stretch. The further I move away right here, I start to get the hip flexors right there. Cool. And I go to town on that as well. And then right here, I find a nice tender spot, so I'll work on that. That might be part of my quad muscle that might be limiting me from bringing my leg up a little bit higher, which I'm going to show you guys at the end with a little post test. Cool. So after I work on my quads, I want to kind of target my uh, hamstrings a little bit more in a really, really cool way, actually. So first off, as I start to target my hamstrings, I want to go, go down as if I'm doing a deadlift, right? This will actually stretch out my hamstrings from my pelvis down to my knee. I'll stretch out my uh, hamstrings. So I start to target that a little bit more right there. And then as I find a nice tender spot, I start to stand up straight. Good. And then I start to go down. This is a little bit of a, I'm actively releasing this muscle, so as I bend down, I'm stretching that hamstring. As I come up with a straight leg, I'm contracting that muscle. Good. And I'm gonna go for a few more. Same thing, one to two minutes on each spot. 
should suffice. And then I work my way up. And as I'm getting there, I don't want to forget about my IT band muscles because believe it or not, that muscle can limit me from bringing my leg straight up. And if it's really, really tight, it can help to deviate my leg out to the side a little bit. So I'll get that for a few seconds. Good. And what I can do is I can shift my hip over a little bit more and I can just start to go down like that. And that'll put a little gentle stretch on my side muscle. Good. Boom. So I've gotten so far with my hypervolt. I've gotten so far uh, one leg. Now I want to target my other leg, which I used to do hip circles with, with the bike. Right? Really, really cool name. Uh, so the first thing is, I want to make sure I get this thing on. It's just like a foam roller, but guess what? It vibrates. So, so some people may say, what's like the big deal with vibration? There are some studies that, go, that are out there, uh, literature reviews that show that vibration, whole body vibration has been found to improve flexibility. Um, also, if you look into dynamic stretching, so dynamic stretching, that'll also help to improve your flexibility. So why not combine both? So right here, I'm targeting my hamstrings a little bit more. Good, on this side. So there's different aspects of your hamstrings. There's the outside portion. So when I turn my foot out, I'm getting the outside portion. When I turn my foot in, I'm getting the inside portion. I go from there. Good, same thing here. Just target each area one to two minutes and that'll get the job done of releasing. And then from there, I can transition over to my quad muscle. You want to hold on to this little viper. It might bounce out of hand. So then I go right there, go right on my quads, using my arms, and I start to roll down. Cool. And then from there, especially in my quads, if I find a spot that's really, really tender, what I want to do is I want to actively release this guy. So I bend my knee in. That'll stretch out my quad muscle as I straighten out. That will also contract my muscle, my quad muscle. So I want to go back and forth over that tender spot a few times. That'll help me to release this quad a little bit more. Cool. Also, as I want to get the adductor muscle group, all I need to do is just turn a little bit more using my other leg to pivot. And I just start to roll back and forth on that. And once again, if I find a very tender spot, what I can do is I can bend and extend my knee, and believe it or not, my adductor, that area is really, really, really tight. So I start to bend and extend, release that muscle, and move on to the next one. You don't want to overdo this, because overdoing it isn't always great. So then you don't want to end up with too many bruises. So then you go right there, you find another spot, you just pivot over that as well. Let the vibration do the work, and then voila. Last but not least, getting the IT band. I got that with the hyperbole for my other leg, so this one, it's a very, very tender muscle. So you wanna be very, very careful with this. As I'm going through this, it is so sore right there, and I wanna gently move about this, and this actually feels good. It actually feels good. Cool, and voila, all done with that. So now I've released my quad muscles, ITB, hamstrings, adductor muscle groups so that I can improve my hip circles. So let's retest this. Let's see how this goes. Awesome, so with the hip circles, first things first, I wanna just first bring my legs straight up, good slowly start to go out and I'm able to go out a little bit wider and it's a lot more fluid, a lot more fluid. Good, and I'm keeping the other leg nice and straight. Good, so I'm not compensating and that feels pretty awesome. Now let's try the other side that I started off with. So I bring this straight up and then I send that leg straight out and this also feels good. It feels nice and fluid. I'm not feeling any restrictions in my adductor muscle groups right there. My quads seem to be firing a lot more efficiently with this. And voila. Cool. So now, 
One of my other favorite exercises that I love to do, uh, just to improve my uh, extensor muscles, my back muscles, my uh, posterior core muscle group, is the swimming, is the swimming Pilates move. So first with the swimming, what happens is I bring my feet together, arms out, and I float straight up. But usually, sometimes people usually come from the low back. So we like to come from our low back and extend up because that seems to be the easiest thing to do. But really, we're supposed to get that extension from our thoracic spine, a little bit higher up. So we want to work on that a little bit more today, as well as my other favorite exercise that I love to do for my spine, just to get my spine moving in different directions. In our Club Pilates classes, we love to make sure we get your spine moving in all directions to decrease stiffness, improve mobility, improve that back pain that's always nagging you because we're always in the same spot at our computers, at our desks. So the other thing is the mermaid. So with the mermaid sitting in Z-sit, I start to place my hands right here, start to pour right over, cool. And I may feel some restrictions right here. So when I use the next uh, hyper ice tool, I want to target my back muscles, my, uh, and my, also my side muscles a little bit more with this. So I go right there and I feel a little restriction. Let me go in the other direction and I feel some restriction right there. So those two exercises, we're going to check those out with the Viper again. All right. So first things first, I want to first get my thoracic spine right here. So I turn this guy on and then I pin it down. And then from there, I start to roll and roll right here. Good. So from there, if I hug myself, I expose my spinal muscles a little bit more, my paraspinal muscles, those muscles that are right next to my spine a little bit more. When I go like this, I'm just, I'm kind of like narrowing that area up a little bit more. So it's more focused on my spine, which is fine. I can extend down to get a nice, uh, if you hear a little pop here and there, that's fine. Those are just air molecules, just releasing from the uh, different aspects of your spine. And then I roll on, keep it moving, hug myself so I can expose this side a little bit more. Cool. And then I can also go to the other side as well. And there are some tender spots in here. I can even work my way down to the lower aspect of this because it's really, really important that I release the whole entire spine, the paraspinal muscles, they go from all the way to the top of your skull, all the way down to where your pelvis is. So it's really, really important that I get that whole entire area. Cool. And now for the funkier part. Now to get my lat muscles that were stopping me from getting that mermaid, I want to be very careful with this because this area is very, very tender. So I lift up just a little bit and I start to work my way up and down. Cool. And as I release, I want to set my arm up, pull away and pull back in. As I pull up, that starts to stretch my lat muscles a little bit more. As I come in, I contract. And that is how you can increase the viper a little bit more. Good. And then I got that side and that feels really good. Now on the other side, I think I might have some tenderness there. So I want to come right here. Cool. And then right here. And I find some tenderness in that upper portion of my lap. So as I work right here, what I can do is just hang out right there, lower my pelvis and just bring the arm up and down like that. And that'll start to loosen that lap muscle up a little bit more. Cool. Cool. And then to get the lower portions of my lat, what I do is I just rotate a little bit and I start to work it just like I was getting my thoracic spine before, my whole entire spinal muscle, my paraspinal muscles. I just want to rotate a little bit and I'll get the lat muscles. If you look at the anatomy, it's right next to the spine and I just work my way up right there, all the way down and all the way up. Cool. Woo. That also feels like a workout too. Now, the next thing is, let's retest those two movements again. So let's go back to the swimming. Cool. I want to see a decrease. I want to see a decrease in the extending from my 
uh, lumbar spine. I want to go more further up to my thoracic spine. So right here, I'm going to extend my arms out, pull my core in, good, and then slowly bring my chest up. And I should have a better extension from my thoracic spine. And from there, I can do some slight swimming where I'm just moving my legs up and down, switching. Good, and I can just start to float my arms up and down with the swimming move. And this feels a lot easier for me to extend up from my thoracic, thoracic spine and from my lumbar spine, which I can get a lot more range, but that's not where I want to hinge from. Cool. Now, for the mermaid pose, I just sit back into that position right there. Cool. And then from there, let me test this out. Place my hand down, start to level over, and whoa, I feel like I'm about to go upside down. That's how much more flexible I feel after doing that little bit of release for literally about a minute each side. And then I can tuck in from here, just so I can stretch out that lat muscle, rotate my spine a little bit. Good, start to bring this over. Go over again, really, really pull into that stretch, feeling a nice deep stretch right there. Rotate in, cool, come back up. And also, let me switch sides so I can make that feel equal on both sides. I might be a little bit tighter on both, on one side than the other, which is fine. So I place this hand down, slowly start to pour over. Cool, awesome. There we go. And then I come back up, rotate up, rotate down and around through my arm, and come right back up. Whew. And my spine feels nice and loose. The muscles around it don't feel as tight, and I feel great. Last but not least, squats. So one of the major limiting factors for people who squat are, it could be their ankles. So for example, if you guys come in a little bit closer, your ankles, they might feel a little bit tight. So as I'm going down into a squat, some people like to look, some people, they have such tight calves that their ankles lift off the ground. So what I'm gonna use the last hyperice tool to do is release my calf a little bit. And I've got the hyperice mini. Look at this cute little thing. <laughs> so this thing might look like, oh, what does it do? Well, some of you guys may use tennis balls, to release your calves and other parts of your anatomy. This hyper, hyper ice mini, you place that in any part of your body where you would normally place that tennis ball and it can help to release things. So I'm gonna first get my calf. So I just lift up just like I did with the Viper before from my back, lift up, and I get the different aspects of my calf muscles. So the calf muscle has a lateral aspect, outside aspect, and a medial aspect, which is on the inside. So guess what, to get the outer aspect, I turn my foot out and I just roll like that. There we go. And I feel some tenderness right there. So maybe I can do a little bit of an active, active release, releasing of this muscle group. So maybe as I go forward, I'm pointing my foot forward. As I go back, I'm sending my toe back up, forward, forward, back, back, forward, forward back, back. That'll start to help to release that muscle a little bit more. I can do the same thing for the inside portion of this calf muscle group. Good. Now, if I get to a very, very tender spot in my calf muscle, what I want to do is stay right there, press that leg, press that leg down, and then just move my ankle back and forth. That might be the restricting component of what's stopping me from lowering really, really well into my squat comfortably. So I just wanna do this a few times, good. Go inside maybe a little bit, find another tennis spot, press that leg down and move my ankle back and forth. Maybe move in all different directions. Awesome, and that feels a lot looser. Now the next thing is, let me get the other side so I can come out of this nice and equal. Same thing here. Calf muscle has two different aspects. The inside portion, good. So maybe I send my foot up the whole time and I just roll. And for me, I have more tightness on the inside portion of this calf muscle. 
the inside portion is a lot tighter. So maybe I just stay right there. Ooh, right there, and I just point like I'm pressing on a gas pedal. Send the foot up, send the foot down, up and down. Good. And I just go back and forth. And then I find a different spot. Let's see if the outside portion, and the outside portion of my calf is fine, but when I start to get lower to like the Achilles tendon right there, that starts to feel a little tender. So guess what? I want to explore the whole aspect of my calf with this tool right here. And right there, I start to feel a little tenderness. Voila, found this guy. And I just release that guy out, send my foot up to tighten it up, go back and forth, move my foot back and forth as I release it. Good. And now let's retest my squat again. Cool. So now with the squat, this is gonna feel a lot easier now. Toes are still pointing forward, hips, feet are hip width apart, and I start to go down, and I feel very comfortable with this being my max right there. Heels, you don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about my heels coming up. Cool. And I feel very, very good lowering down a little bit more, and then I go from there. And then the more I do it, I own that new range. So it's cool and it's great to use these tools at home to not only improve your performance in our Pilates studios and also with your other activities, but just in general, just to feel a little looser and lit. So one of our key classes at Club Pilates that helps to improve your flexibility and overall just decreasing stiffness is our CP Restore class. So I want you guys to stay tuned through your virtual classes, contact your instructors and find out what days of the week that we offer our CP Restore classes in your studio. All right, guys, if you guys have any questions, comment below and I will answer. Dr. Femi Batiku, out. Have a good one.